Orlando Seraful, left, and Maeve Beatty in Soul Pepper Theaters Orlando, Alexander Antonijevic, adapted by Sarah Rell from the novel by Virginia Woolf. Directed by Katrina Derchuk. Until July 29th at the Young Center for the Performing Arts, 50 Tank House Lane. Soulpepper.ca or 416-866-8666 Virginia Woolf's Orlando is an extended love letter, a fake biography, a whirling historical pageant, and a prescient meditation on the limitations of traditional gender roles. Wolf wrote it quickly between 1927-28, the same time as she was composing the foundational feminist essay, A Room of One's Own, and in her diaries called it a writer's holiday. Sarah Rell's 2010 stage adaptation respects the literary nature of Wolf's original, at points to a fault, but it is also full of potential for theatrical fun and playfulness, qualities which don't always come through in Katrina Derchuk's staging for Soul Pepper. Article continued below There's a thoughtful and poetic quality to Dara Chuck's approach, lit up from within by Sarah Fool's lustrous performance as the title character. As she moves through the character's transformations, Orlando lives for more than three centuries and morphs from male to female halfway through, a fool and Dara Chuck allow hints of contemporary physicality and vocal patterning into her performance. In other words, if Fool plays Orlando, while always in part playing herself, something that's literalized in an addition to Roll's text when the play catches up with the present moment, a Fool's Orlando says that she's 36, owns a motor car, a black woman, the original says, a woman, read more. Canadian Stage, Soul Pepper Theatre and Musical Stage Company Lead Dora Award nomination Soul Pepper Theatre features female, minority artists in 2018-2019 seasoned man who put the king and I back on its musical throne acknowledging a fool's ethnicity brings another level of intersectionality to the play's treatment of gender and class, and opens up reconsideration of previous exchanges, in particular an early scene in which Orlando and his lover Sasha, played by the white actor Maeve Beatty, chants on a staging of the final scene of Othello in Orlando is shaken by his empathetic reaction, the frenzy of the moor seemed to be his own frenzy, I found the significance of this to be more suggested than explored, but it adds an intriguing layer of contemporary resonance. It also pushes beyond Rel's somewhat cloying conceit of a chorus, John Jarvis, Craig Lozon, and Alex McCoy, narrating the story, by puncturing the fourth wall and inviting the audience to consider everything on stage through the lens of today. This is at the point in the tale where Orlando comes into her full power as a writer, and it's as if the production at last allows itself to fully be theater, briefly shaking off Rel's reverent adherence to Wolf's literary conventions. Wolf wrote the novel about and for her lover Vita Sackville West, and in it articulated views about gender and sexuality that continue to enlighten and challenge, and that are further complicated on stage. For the first half of the play, a fool plays the male Orlando while most of the female roles are played by the male chorus in partial drag, including Jarvis as aging Queen Elizabeth I. An exception is Vita Sasha, a Russian princess who is Orlando's first love, the scenes between them genuinely spark and smolder, and I wished that BD would return for more than fleeting second-act appearances. Article continued below the production gains energy in the second act, once Orlando has turned female and realizes she's expected to behave the way she previously expected women to be, obedient, chaste and scented. We move beyond the limited interest of male actors playing cliches of femininity to a meteor exploration of gender roles. Those who love the novel may miss some of the material that Rell's trimmed out, encounters with 18th century writers such as Pope and Swift, a whole episode in which Orlando lives with gypsies. But there is still a lot of Wolf's distinctive voice here to enjoy, the images that flash through mind when he first sees Sasha, Melon, Pineapple, Olive Tree, Emerald, Fox in the Snow, for its first half the production looks surprisingly sparse, as if perhaps on a limited budget, the festive transformation of London during an ice storm is hard to physically evoke with a few balloons. Things get more visually interesting in the second half as Orlando gets to wear one fabulous period outfit after another, designed by Gillian Gallo, and the production's at its best as the story enters the 20th century, as 
The actors work with the text and the technical, design elements, set in lights by Lorenzo Savoini, sound and composition by Thomas Ryder Payne, to evoke the confusing and thrilling societal and cultural changes happening everywhere around Orlando. This production is a big break for Derechuk, still a member of the Soul Pepper Academy, the theater's training arm. It will be exciting to see what she does with Michael Frayn's Copenhagen, another brainy, wordy play, at Soul Pepper next season. Karen Fricker is a Toronto-based theater critic and a freelance contributor for the star. Follow her on Twitter, at Karen Fricker 2.